there are a number of different ways that you can look at your artwork. So if you go to the view menu, we'll see some options. One thing is we can toggle the whole interface to go to full screen. You can take that off as well. You can zoom in by hitting zoom in. You can keep zooming as long as you want. And you can also zoom out. And you can also hit the key number one for this. Now if sometimes you look and you go to view and zoom in and zoom out are not chosen or are not choosable, uh, that's because your your selection isn't in the drawing area. So just make sure that you're actually working in the drawing area to be able to use those. So to make the zoom go back to normal, you can just hit reset zoom. You can also rotate the view either clockwise or counterclockwise. And you can continue to do that, those rotate that rotating. And you can easily reset the rotation just by hitting reset rotation. You can also pan drawings with the pan tool or the space bar. If you were to move that underneath the view, you'll find that you can reset pan, bring a drawing back to where you wanted it. So that's really convenient when you're working and you start to lose track of where your drawing is. There's also a grid that you can use and you can have it in a 12 field grid or a 16 field grid or a square grid for a variety of different you know applications that you would have. I usually don't use the grid myself and you can also choose whether to show the onion skinning or not. This is a whole topic we'll be dealing with later, but the onion skin allows you to see drawings that are ahead and drawings that are behind. And with the onion skin, you can also choose how many drawings you'd like to show going forward and back. And there's also a light table. Let me turn the onion skin off. So if we go to the light table and enable that, you can see that different layers will uh, show through. For example, if I'm on the background layer here, you can see that the background is dark and that the other layers are light. And then if I jump up to the drawing layer with the characters, now the characters are darker and the background and other layers are lightened out. If I were to add additional layers to this and using the light table, I would be able to draw over those characters so here's an example of adding a layer and now the drawing has gotten fainter so that if I wanted to draw a new expression over that I would be able to see the fainter version and then the newer version as well. Lastly on the view menu is the option for you to show the strokes in the drawing and when you've done that you can actually see the outlines of the strokes themselves along with the control points. I'm going to turn that off and now here's a couple other very critical things to know about when viewing your interface is that on the border between your drawing view and let's say your properties view over here are a couple very small buttons with triangles in them and if you press one of these accidentally you can get a little bit lost. So what this does is it allows whichever window you're using to expand fully. So if I want to take this drawing area and expand it over to the right, taking up the entire width, I would just press that one small button. And if you're not planning on doing that, if you did it by accident, you could be wondering what happened. So to restore that, just go back to the button and press it again. And now you've brought it back. By the same token, if I want this area on the right to expand all the way over, I hit the button that faces toward the left and now it completely takes over and dominates the screen and to restore it I press the button again. The same works for the thumbnails that run underneath. If, if I press this button and I want this view to completely run over the thumbnails, now it does. Now if I want those thumbnails back I click down here, bring it back. If I wanted the thumbnails to completely take over I would do that. So the bigger, by the way, the bigger the thumbnails um, get in size, the fewer of them that you're actually able to see on the screen. 
So I do want to show you these sliders. When you get close to the border, you get this little slider that looks like two lines and two arrows. And if you take that slider, then you can increase the size gradually, and you can decrease the size. So with the thumbnails especially, this is important because if you want to see a lot of thumbnails down here, you can make this smaller. But if you make it taller, then you have an easier time later on manipulating some of the layer tabs that are in there. We could do the same thing with this properties bar window. We could slide it, move it however you want. Another option that you have with these workspaces is that, like on this thumbnail, I could just press this X button and make the whole thumbnail section disappear. I also have the option by going up to Windows and choosing Thumbnails from here to bring it back in its own separate window. And that may be more convenient so that you can view the thumbnails and its own timeline. If you find that you've been working with deleting and moving different properties and you want to go back to just restore everything the way it was, you can just go to Windows and then Restore default workspace and then you have everything there the way that you were looking for it. Under properties over here there is properties for panels, properties for storyboard which has to do really with the captions and things that you put in there. 